Good morning and welcome to Coffee with Compassion. My name is Pastor Chris, and this morning we're going to talk briefly about, does God really ever abandon us? Well, good morning again. My name is Pastor Chris, and uh, I am uh, talking this morning on uh, being alone. Um, You know, yesterday, Ben Hanneman did a great sermon on just what it means to be alone, and he talked briefly about various stories in the Bible um, where people were left alone or in a place that they were alone. Um, But the reality was is that they were never alone because God was with them. And God makes that promise that he will never leave us and he will never forsake us. And so I want to start this morning by just saying some encouraging words to you that uh, I know many people right now, and I'm not just saying this, that are truly struggling with feeling alone. They're struggling with depression and they feel like they just don't have anybody on their side, that there's no end to what's happening right now. And they just are just struggling. Well, let's take a quick moment and read out of the book of Genesis and a story about Joseph. And I know that Ben Hanneman uh, mentioned that yesterday, uh, but we're going to talk a little bit about a, a moment in time for Joseph that was probably the loneliest he felt, and yet we're going to see scripturally where God not only didn't abandon him, but he was working on his behalf. So this is just something for you to think about this morning. Um kind of the prelude to the story is Joseph had already been betrayed by his brothers. And you may know this already, that he was thrown down into a cistern and there he waited until his brothers were initially going to kill him. Uh, But instead they found some slave traders, uh, as the Bible describes them, and they sold their youngest brother off or their next to youngest brother off. And uh, he was taken into the land of Egypt where he was sold to Potiphar. And uh, God never abandoned him in this process. As a matter of fact, Joseph was placed on a pedestal uh, in Potiphar's house where everything he touched, Potiphar basically was making money hand over fist. And Potiphar loved Joseph because he could trust him and uh, and because that there was just something different about him. And for those of us who are struggling right now, the first thing we need to remember is that there is something special about you too. And I can't emphasize that enough, that your father loves you. Your heavenly father loves you so much. He is never going to leave you. He is never going to abandon you. So when we struggle with being alone, it's quite frankly a lie from the enemy. And we have to learn to trust God in those moments. Well, there came a time when Joseph, while being very successful in the home, was accused by Potiphar's wife of rape. Now, what really happened was is that she wanted to have intercourse with Joseph, not to be blunt, and he refused her because he was loyal to Potiphar. Plus, he stood on his Christian values, if you will, even though Christ had not been born yet. There was his character and his integrity that he did not want to let go of, and he didn't. But it cost him, and it cost him for the second time everything. And so as a result of that, he was placed in jail. And I just want to read real fast out of Genesis 39, just a few verses, if you'll indulge me this morning. It said, so Joseph's master arrested him and put him in the same prison where the king's prisoners were kept. While Joseph was in prison, the Lord was with him. The Lord reached out to him and with his unchanging love and gave him protection. The Lord also put Joseph on good terms with the warden. So the warden placed Joseph in charge of all the prisoners who were in that prison, and Joseph became responsible for everything that they were doing. The warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and made him or made whatever he did successful. Now, I'm just going to share this for a moment. Right now, some of you that are struggling with feeling alone and you feel like God's nowhere near you, that God is not listening, that he doesn't care. I would argue with you that you need to get back in the word and see who your heavenly father truly is and what he knows and believes about you. You're valuable to him 
and he loves you. He is working on your behalf. But I believe oftentimes because we're so focused on how we feel that we forget the factual promises of God's word. And until we get that place in our head straight where we trust God, this is where faith develops. When we develop our faith to trust God in these moments, when we feel alone, when we feel depressed, when we feel feel anxiety. And I'm not saying that those things are not real. Please do not minimize what I am saying. But I'm saying that oftentimes we trust how we feel and we don't trust God's word. God was doing big things with Joseph. Now, don't make no mistake, Joseph would rather have been out of jail and back home with his father and back home to where things were normal. But sometimes things don't go back to normal. That's when you have to trust God Overcome your feelings of being alone, pour out your heart to him, and then just trust he's taking you where you need to be. With that said, let's pray real quick and we'll get on with our day, okay? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your word. Lord, we thank you for the promise in your word, just like you did with Joseph. You will never leave us. You will never forsake us. You will never abandon us. And Lord, we thank you that you are always working on our behalf, even when we don't see it, and even when we don't feel it. Lord, help us, Lord, and help those this morning who are struggling with feeling alone. Lord, just comfort them with your Holy Spirit. S inspire some people just to come to them, to minister to them, to talk to them, to love on them. And Lord, I pray that you put people across their path this morning that they also can go out and minister to them. Because sometimes we can defeat this feeling of being alone when we're the ones doing the reaching out. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You guys have a blessed morning. I look forward to talking to you soon.